The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. We got, excuse me, Thursday morning? Yes, Thursday morning. I'm lost in the week already, folks. January 13th, Thursday morning, 9.06 a.m. We get the markets in positive territory to kick things off. You're looking at an S&P positive by about 12 points right now. This on the heels of some volatility yesterday with CPI data. We got PPI data this morning. We'll go over that in a moment, but all the markets higher right now. S&Ps up about three tenths percent. You get the NASDAQ 100 up about four tenths percent, about 50 points off of 16,000 right now. You get the Dow up about four tenths percent as well 36,294 Russell same exact deal up about four percent four tenths percent trading at 2181 Bitcoin quite the rebound from lower prices earlier this week just hanging right around 44,000 this morning crude comfortably above 82 bucks we actually got an 83 print late in the day yesterday in crude gold contract giving back some of the recent gains you're negative by six dollars trading at 1821 we jump over to notes and bonds this morning pretty tame action you're talking about a yield in the tenure of about 1.73 percent you look at the action pretty much right in line with where we were trading oscillating around yesterday in that tenure you were as low as 128 over not 09 just after the close last night so we're getting a little bit of a rise in price and lower yield sitting at 1.73 percent in the tenure we jump over to the volatility the index, the VIX, this morning backing off to 1771, far removed from Monday's volatility of 2333 when we got some severe negative action in the markets. All right, jumping over to the headline number. Let me find it for you. We got a lot of articles up there, but there it is. Wholesale prices up 0.2% in December, less than expected, but still a new 12 month record. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hicks after the break. He made a great point yesterday talking about CPI data, saying we basically knew nine tenths of the number coming out, right? Because we knew, and we're going to know for CPI data, the number is going to be around 7% for the months of February and March, is what the market is looking for. That's because. We're dealing with some comps where we don't have to rise very much in the next couple months to be at 7%. We just have to stay where we are because that's where we are compared to where prices were a year ago. So when you go over to the PPI number, it's less than expected. But when you hear 12 months records, et cetera, stuff like that, not too tantalizing when most of that data has occurred for the better part of 2021, was, which is where that inflation really accelerated, which is why we're getting year over year comparisons right now that are record breaking going back to 1982, at least for CPI. Producer price index, PPI, was expected to rise 0.4% in December, so a little bit of cooling action. We also got initial claims for unemployment that came in at 230,000. Uh, yeah, they don't put those here, but 230,000. Let's see if they refreshed. I bet they do. I had this up early this morning. There it is. Weekly jobless claims, 230,000, uh, a rise above the estimate of 200 and well above the average that we've been hitting, but still all things considered, 230,000. The other things to consider about the weekly initial jobless claims number is that we're coming out of the holiday season, when usually you see a rise in those numbers coming out of the seasonal employees that you got for Christmas. For all of 2021, the 9.7% gain was the biggest on record in data going back to 2010. How about that? 9.7 months, 9.7% on a 12 month basis, the highest number since only 2010, which is remarkable when you talk about producer prices, initial claims, a little bit of an uptick versus recently, but nonetheless continuing, 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 continuing to decline. Uh, 1.56 million, that falling by 194,000. The lowest level, since June of 1973, continuing unemployment claims. Now they're a week behind the headline number, 1.56 million, the lowest number since 1973. It's amazing the records that we continue to break here. With the jobless level continuing to fall, they make a note of the 3.9% unemployment here. You make a note of the fact that you got CPI at 7%, you get PPI at 9%. You better believe the conversation of three or four rates is in the mix, folks. It's just a matter of whether that is gonna hamper um, the market run. It's going to come. Maybe these growth stocks 
can weather that. We're going to find out. They had a little bit of a taper tantrum to begin the year. S&Ps, though, clawing back pretty quickly. When you take a look at the S&Ps, I've been talking about this trend channel for a period of time. We bounce right back in that trend channel. Quite a bounce indeed. You were almost 100 points, maybe 80 points below that trend line. Doesn't look like much on this chart, but that's because this chart is about 3,000 points from the low to the high of 2174 to 4808. But you look at that spike, we spiked down to a low of 4572, okay? And that line was at about 4662. So you had 90 points. Things looking pretty dire, but you've seen we've done it a couple times before. We'll see if we make it to the top portion of that trend line that we've been in since basically the COVID lows. In the S&P, you jump over to the Qs, okay? Qs, a little bit of a different story. I got a trend line here that's been intact basically since September of 2000. Maybe you could call it from November of 2000 when the general market basically took off. And you see, again, we dip below that trend line briefly on the acceleration we got Monday. We do not have a day for today's action yet because the markets have not opened. There's Monday's action, but quite a rebound, man. You ever make it to the top of this trend line, you're talking about all-time highs. In the queues, as we'd be sitting at about 410, all time highs going back to November of 40871. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. Speaking of, we'll drill it back down to a 15 minute. You have Apple shares this morning going to open a hair higher. We have Microsoft shares. Microsoft's been pretty volatile recently along with the market. Microsoft shares going to open up, uh, yeah, $2.50. There's a pop for you. Look at that run Microsoft had yesterday early before giving it back a bit. We jump over to Amazon. Amazon's been on quite a run from the Monday lows. Amazon going to open at about 33.07 this morning. You jump to Google shares. Google going to open at about 28.40. Let's see how Tesla's trading this morning. Tesla, 11.13. Not bad. All right, what else we got pulled up here in terms of market action? Let's jump around to Delta Airlines. Delta out with their earnings this morning. They were trading higher earlier. They're holding on to those gains up to 41.62. I was talking about in the den earlier today uh, when they started coming out, some of the headline numbers they had there. They earned 22 cents a share for the quarter. Market was looking for about 13 cents. In terms of traffic, which I thought was the coolest part, just fundamentally in terms of the travel industry, where we are, where we are versus 2019, which is the fairest comp outside of COVID, as in getting back to a pre-COVID numbers, maybe. Fourth quarter traffic for Delta down 28% versus 29%. Their capacity, they got down 21%. So they've removed capacity to deal with the amount of traffic decrease they've had. Fourth quarter revenue, nearly 80% recovered versus 2019 for Delta. Fourth quarter revenue, 9.47 billion versus 11.44 billion in 2019. Uh, what they do say though, is that they expect to return to profitability in the final three quarters of this coming year. January, February, potentially gonna be losing months. Probably they're dealing with the Omicron wave, right? Cases spiking dramatically, but they were making the case that they will be returning to profitability. That's probably what sent this stock jumping higher. You're up about a dollar this morning. That's gonna be about a 2.5% pop on the open for Delta shares up to 4160 as they basically kick off uh, earnings season. KB Homes, they were out with their numbers after the bell last night as they accelerate higher. You're going to be opening up about 10% for KB Homes, up to 4660, out with their earnings last night. Conference call begins at about 5 o'clock, and the market has just trickled higher for the entirety of the overnight session. We put KB, now you're going to open at about 47. You put it on the daily. And what's interesting is you're going to be above anywhere you've been on KB Homes, going back all the way to June. Recent highs on KB Homes, just under 46 bucks. We got a bid right now of 46.62. Home builders continuing to trade higher. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures up about 12 points right now, trading at 47.28. You get the NASDAQ 100 up about three-tenths percent, trading at 15,947. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, talking about option, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, here we go with another big data point this, uh, you know, this morning on PPI. You know, it. here's what, uh, you know, I want your viewers to understand. There's four reads of inflation, right? It's the wages from non-farm payrolls. It's CPI that we got yet yesterday. It's the PCE, uh, personal consumption uh, from income and outlays, and then it's PPI. And PPI is a distant fourth when it comes to measurements of inflation. Why? Because it's at the producer level. You can't even guarantee that all those, a fraction will make it to the consumer level. So in terms of my years watching the markets, get used to muted responses from PPI, just not as much as you'd think or not as big of a reaction. Everyone still watches it, but you're watching for outliers. Now, this number came in relatively soft. Make sure you don't get caught up with the media beating you overhead with the year-over-year -year numbers. Those are pretty much built in. We knew 91% of that number before it came out, right? Because all they do is they take last year's number out and put in today's number, and they get their year-over-year -year number. So uh, I wouldn't – the market clearly isn't overreacting. Uh, the bond market – is not overreacting. So this is a number that should be paid attention to, but not um, overindulged in, Tommy. You make some great points, man. You made some great points yesterday in kind of similar fashion, right, with the CPI. And I thought you explained it very well in the same way, saying, listen, we're getting one month of data here. You're going to hear the 12-month number, though, and 11 of those months we already knew. So we're at 7% right. on the CPI. 
uh, and 9.7, man, on, on PPI for all of 2021. But as you say, if you look at the month, the most recent data for December, 0.2%. Market was looking for 0.4%. Um, so even if you're paying attention to that number, maybe a little bit of a slowdown on a monthly basis versus what the market was looking for. We have some earnings out from Delta this morning, Kevin. Um, mm -hmm. Some decent earnings for Delta. They're up a little bit this morning with some of the travel stocks. Uh, have you seen Delta? What do you think of the action on them? I mean, still well under 20 2019 levels, but they seem to think they're going to come back to pro, uh, profitability uh, in a couple months, which is not bad, man, for that travel industry if we're only a couple months away from levels. And you've been talking about the TSA numbers, man, but if we're back at levels, that allows these airlines to start actually having real earnings coming out of this pandemic. Yeah, you know what you can bet on as the pandemic wanes? That these companies, and you can say this about companies, good quality companies over all sectors, they adjust to the market, right? I mean, D Delta made money. They made 22 cents a share. They are re what really, remember the three-headed monster of earnings, Tommy. It's the earnings per share, it's the revenues, and it's the guidance. And the guidance was strong from Delta CEO. He talked very positively about spring and summer travel. So I think, you know, Delta up 2.5% pre-market, Boeing up 5 bucks pre-market, good news uh, potentially the 737 getting approved in China by the end of the month. That's good news. So that, you've yeah. got the airlines kind of lifting here to start the day, Tommy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I'll tell you, Kevin, from my situation. So we're in Polk County, Florida. And, you know, whether you agree with it or not, folks, as it goes into it, the way. So we just got a notification yesterday. We got kids in school. So they're changing things. And, and I'm seeing myself, Kevin, the you know, and hopefully we do evolve out of this where this isn't life status quo, right? So hopefully we're coming soon. So now in schools, and Florida catches a lot of heat, folks, but I think this is how you're at least going to see things progress state by state as we get over this last wave, hopefully. Um, now that they, they'll let you know when cases are positive in schools, Kevin, and they used to then tell you when cases were in your class, right? Now they're not even going to tell you when they're in their class, which I understand people might, you know, they fall on whichever side. They're going to let you know when there are clusters in a classroom. But it, the point being, this is how it's going to go. And the first remnants of it, whether it's Florida, you know, being the state that is ahead of the curve there, whether you agree or not, but it is, man. And I imagine over the next couple of months, as these states come out, you are going to have these COVID cases that are going to come up and it's not going to be that classes are canceled. You can't do it, you know, and you're seeing the first walkout, I think, in Florida. Um, and it's a little bit, folks, you know, saying the kids, they have, they're not going to know anymore if you have it in your class. But this is how it's going to go, which is a good thing for life, I think, coming back to normal over the next few months or what it is. Uh, so with that, Kevin, as, as, I, as I explained that one a little bit. But with that in mind, you guys coming up at 12 noon fast market. What are you guys talking about today, Kevin? Three good stocks, two of them coming out with earnings tomorrow morning. We'll look at, in uh, Lifefolio, we'll do a segment on banks and financials. So we'll trade J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo in the second and third um, parts of the show. And then the original part of the show, the, the first part, we'll look at Micron. Nathan Peterson from Charles Schwab Center for Financial Analysis. He's got a presentation to do on Micron that everyone should be interesting in. So Micron, J.P. Morgan, and Wells Fargo today. Nice. Some three interesting stocks, man. Wells Fargo in particular. I was checking this out last week. Quite a banner year um, of turnaround, you could say, for them in 2021, potentially. They're starting the year off in positive territory. But I don't think many would realize, Kevin, if you weren't in the banks or just weren't paying attention, Wells Fargo almost 100% in terms of where you started 2021, around the $30 range, you're pushing $56 today on Wells Fargo, those banks in a rising yield environment. Well, Kevin, man, we appreciate the uh, conversation as always. We look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today. We'll be watching. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, Tommy. Have a great weekend, Kevin. Take care, folks. Tune in today, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, they got a couple great guests. They're gonna be talking about the stocks. You heard it here. They're gonna be talking about who? J.P. Morgan, Mr. Diamond, Wells Fargo. And the reason why I mentioned Wells Fargo, it is an interesting one, folks. It almost, you know, I mean, quite a rebound story, right? Now, this does not do the full justice of this stock, right? In terms of 66 bucks back in the beginning of 2018, down to during the COVID depths 
what are we talking about for a low there? About 20 bucks. And then last year, you trade from 30 to almost 56. Now, in comparison here, which is the reason why I bring it up, all the banks did very well when you were coming off a yield of a half a percent, but not comparatively in terms of Wells Fargo had been so hurt, rightfully so, for the way that they had serviced their customers or just really exploited them on many occasions. Uh, but nonetheless, they got a turnaround going in the market, paying attention there because you look at a company like JP Morgan, for instance, all right, last year, you were starting about 128, you finished it at 160. So what is that, adding 25 to 30% versus Wells Fargo? adding a dramatic fashion talking about almost 100 percent even if you take where it chopped around the covid lows of 100 you put up about a 60 percent return for a company like jp morgan uh we jump over to bank of america bank of america yeah quite a banner year they turned about 50 percent for the better part of 2021 finishing at 45 all these banks that should be an interesting conversation in these chip stocks my goodness i got an article up here it'd be interesting to see what they talk about from micron now micron let's see if i can find this article because i've been talking about the metaverse for a while here let's see where are we going there we go analysts on metaverse benefiting chip makers big tech and crypto i mean this is the part right so facebook is leading the charge here, but they have a little bit of a conflict of interest because it's in their inherent interest to shift the conversation on how much damage they're doing to society through their social media networks to transforming the company into a metaverse. So take that into account that they are a PR machine right now, but we'll talk about it a little bit more because there's gonna be more companies than just Facebook profiting over the metaverse taken over over the next five to 10 years. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we open in the green right now with the S&Ps up 15 points almost. You're trading at 47.30, coming up right near the highs we had intraday yesterday, 47.39. NASDAQ 100 up about 63 points, 15,952. You're about 50 points away from the highs we had just after 10 a.m. yesterday morning. Dow, you're talking about right at those highs intraday yesterday. Pretty similar time of the day as well. Dow trading up 132 points and the Russell in the green by nine. You compare it though, the Russell. Russell, you're talking about still a good 1% off of where we were just yesterday morning. All right, jumping back to that article, uh, talking about chip makers set to be winners as the metaverse takes off. So this is a Morningstar report. The benefits to the chip makers will be uneven. There's a few points I want to make out in this report, and I have no fundamental awareness of what they're talking about here in terms of Morningstar. But what they say in here, uh, since many of the tasks that take place that take place in the metaverse involve real-time processing of immense amount of data, I'd say that's putting it lightly, folks. This will require the chips involved to use advanced process nodes that are only available at Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, and Intel. Now, they will not be the only benefiters, uh, the, the only companies that benefit from the metaverse, but interesting. And this is where the fundamental technology of everything going on, folks, um, it's tough to keep up with, but pay attention to what's out there. You do your best. You keep your stops in place. Nonetheless, Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, and Intel. Now, what's interesting here is they talk about, though, you know, you got Kramer out there talking about four stocks to pick, talking about NVIDIA is one of the ones to be out there. So there's a bunch of different companies that you can go on to. Nobody can be sure of where that's going to lie in terms of who benefits the most. You jump over to Intel shares. Intel, quite the pop Monday. You back off a bit. Uh, that was some news related, but take a look at this stock, right? Hopefully they are the ones that benefit because it needs some benefit, man. You look at where they've been. You're talking about Intel stagnant for almost four years. That should be the case considering where we've been since 2018. Now, you did have quite an acceleration prior to that. We backed things up, okay? But, I mean, you're still under where you were in the year 2000. Talk about getting a little bit ahead of yourself on some equities there, let alone you're talking about this thing really broke out in 2017 from about 33 bucks. And since then, we've been chopping around 15 bucks for the better part of almost four years on Intel shares. Now, you compare that with a company like NVIDIA, for instance, watch out. Yeah. Talk about uh, leaving the gap open there. NVIDIA up to 346 last year. You've given back some of the gains. But keep in mind, folks, you were trading at $31 as recently as 2019. You know, you were even trading lower than that. You were trading, yeah, $31 as recently as 2019. You jump over to the Analyze tab. They got their earnings February 23rd. We're talking about right now a company valued at $706 billion for NVIDIA. You jump over to Intel for comparison. You're talking about a company at $227 billion. Talk about getting their lunch eaten uh, in a big way. All right. What else we got going on? Jumping on. We got the – let's jump around to some of the markets moving. No, yeah, this is the one I want to talk about, Virgin Galactic. So this is a – a real unfortunate chain of events that has just taken money out of the market to an obscene level. Uh, there is your chart. There it is, folks. Now, this is a SPAC, okay, which is why when you put this thing on a daily that goes back as far as you can, a five-year daily, this thing ticks around at about $10, as SPACs do, uh, until it becomes the special purpose acquisition corporation and they tell you what they're going to do with that money. Now, talk about getting ahead of itself three times here. You jump up to $40 early on in 2020. COVID hits, you come back down to 10. You jump up to $62 early on last year. Somehow the market got ahead of itself. You trade back down to... What, what is the low? Let's see. Let's see what the exact low is here. Fourteen twenty-seven. You make it up to fifty-five bucks on Richard Branson going into space. They dump money into the public at fifty dollars or forty dollars or something like that. And guess what? What are they doing? In the time frame that they're at, they're doing it again. They're raising more money. The company intends to raise four hundred and twenty-five million dollars from the sale of twenty twenty-seven convertible senior notes through a private offering with an additional $75 million option also executed to be granted to buyers. They're going to raise half a billion dollars in debt. And the market says, boy, it just doesn't stop here. The stock's down, yeah, double digits, right? 14.4% now at this point. Uh, 
Branton and three other company employees took a test space flight in July 2021. Now, here's what happened here, folks, because I remember it going on. You know, if you're making a, a slight trade to benefit off of momentum and you're going to put your stop in and you're going to get out and you're buying that equity on the day Branson flies into space, thinking maybe you catch the ride. Maybe you're right because that thing did peak out. The play would have been to buy it ahead of that run up. Now we know that. But when it was there. You were pushing 55 bucks. You were pushing five times the value you're at right now, basically. You were pushing 11 billion market cap, something like that, 12 billion, 13 billion market cap. Folks, the entire space tourism industry is supposed to be just a multi-billion dollar industry in five or 10 years. As in, if you own the entire industry in five or 10 years, I forget which year it is exactly, okay, projections, that maybe you do a few billion in revenue if you own the entire industry within five or 10 years. You're not gonna own the entire industry, number one, because we already have all the richest people in the world starting their own space tourism companies, all right? But Virgin Galactic is just in the space tourism business right now, as opposed to a company like SpaceX that is just doing huge government projects, et cetera. Point being, that valuation, not fair, to say the least, and the market. Didn't think you'd go back to $10 where the SPAC began. But be careful on these equities, folks. It's really unfortunate you have the richest people in the world starting space tourism companies, running up their stocks on that acceleration, and then cashing out bringing in a ton of money from the market, from those investors, and the stock trades back to $10, which is what happened. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stocks that are making moves today. We jump over to Boeing, as Kevin Hinks said in the interview, uh, could resume service in China as soon as this month. That puts a pop in Boeing. What also puts a pop probably is the airlines saying that they're kind of maybe getting back. Now, this channel line no longer intact, to say the least, as you came off the $89 low during COVID, chopped around for a while, broke below that channel line back in September, made it under 200 bucks. But it's been quite a run to start the year. You started 20. Yeah, pretty close. There it is. We started the year at 205. You accelerated from 185, though, just recently, as recently as December 20th. You're talking about less than a month from 185 to 221. And really, we were just trading at 210. So quite a pop to start off the year for Boeing shares as maybe that's a sign of a resurgence there as well. We put it on the three year weekly You can see we came into COVID at about 350. You were as high as 446 before they had the 737 max fiasco uh, erupt, unfortunately, but 221, pretty remarkable when you look at Boeing that we are trading at prices that you were trading at a year and a half ago. How'd the market get as high as it did in June of 20, right? Quite a turnaround for some of these companies. Even look at a company like Delta. Delta, June of 20, was trading at 35 bucks. You were just trading at 35 bucks at the end of last year. All the travel companies struggling to get back to business as usual. But this might be the time, folks, to check out these travel companies because you heard it from Delta. If they start really pulling in some profits towards the second, third, fourth quarter of this year, you're going to see those stocks uh, price that in, and you're going to see it price it in at higher prices than you're at right now. All right, stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back in three minutes. We get the S&Ps climbing a little bit higher, back to a five-minute chart. You see the volatility on the open. We're positive by 14 points right now. NASDAQ 100, positive by 74. We get the Dow, positive by 112. You got crude sitting at 82.58. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperbyte's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Speaking of chips, you got Taiwan Semiconductor continuing the run. You're up almost 9% on their numbers. You check it out. There's a pop for you. Put it on the last year. You above, you're above anywhere you were in the last 12 months. We take a little bit of a longer-term look on a five-year weekly. That's quite a pop, folks. You're in quite a consolidation, and this thing just crushes over the top of that consolidation. You check out the run. Last year, COVID lows, excuse me, not last year, 2020, you're talking about 42 bucks. You come into 2021 at about 110, basically a consolidation year, but not the same in 2022 as Taiwan Semiconductor takes out its highs. I assume you're going to do it on volume with the acceleration you're getting right now. I mean, look at this high. Going back to February 15th, you got 46 million shares at the high. I mean, the week prior to that run up, you had only 54 million shares. So the two weeks combined, you're talking about 100 million shares. Uh, right now, we're already above 51 million, and we basically have two full trading days left, and today is going to be a big day for this equity when you have this type of action. I mean, look at, in the first five minutes of trading, you did 4.5 million shares. Uh, that's going to tail off a bit, but nonetheless, that is some strength for Taiwan Semiconductor trading higher, up almost 8.6%. And uh, they report record profit. Beating analyst forecasts while also issuing an upbeat outlook amid surging demand for semiconductors, to put it lightly. All right. KB Homes out with their numbers. Let's see how they're trading. They were higher in the pre-market by a decent amount. They pop higher on the open as well, up almost 4% right now. Lennar. Lennar was just out with raising their dividend. They did not have earnings, but they raised their dividend. The next quarterly dividend... Um, 37.5 cents as they are raising it to a buck 50 for the year from a dollar. So you raise it from 25 cents to 37.5 cents per a quarter. Uh, gotta like that. Market always loves increasing dividends or share buybacks, both basically the same exact thing, just under a different name. You got Lennar up 2.3% on that news. That was pretty much it. Yeah, you got the dating sites trading higher. You got Match and Bumble both trading higher. Goldman Sachs talking about uh, a buy from a neutral, saying both would benefit from structural industry tailwinds. Not sure what that basically alludes to, but they bump them both up there. Match up 2.5%. Taking a look at a little bit longer term time frame. There's your five-year weekly on Match and Bumble. Bumble doesn't even go back five years, I don't think. Yeah, Bumble. Bumble goes public. 
Uh, right before COVID, and this thing's been, maybe that's a max pain situation for Bumble. You're up 4.8% right now. Uh, that trend line, it's always interesting, folks, right? Now, now this is interesting in terms of when you have an area that's an area of support, sometimes it turns into an area of resistance, or if you have an area of resistance, it turns into an area of support. I mean, this trend line, it's just been oscillating around it. Maybe that's where we finally catch a bid here. I mean, you're talking about trading from 84 bucks when this thing goes public, more than cut in half right now, with a valuation of about $4.4 billion for Bumble. Now, Bumble, I don't think they have a ton of other brands. Match really encompasses many, many brands in terms of how many they labels they fall under. Um, I think Bumble is pretty much... Yeah, just Bumble built with women at the center. Basically, Bumble is the swiping app where women have the only option to say the first hello as opposed to being bombarded by men on most dating sites is how it goes. Uh, but let's jump over to Match because Match really is. I think Match owns Tinder. They own a ton of different sites. Yeah, here we go. Tinder, Match, OkCupid. Okay Cupid, Hinge, Pears, Plenty of Fish, Our Time. Seen many ads for many of those. And you talk about the market cap, much larger because of the number of brands, $36 billion versus a company like Bumble pushing uh, $4 billion. So match almost 10 times the size of the company that Bumble is today. All right, what else do I have pulled up here? We talked about Virgin Galactic. Uh, Tesla, interesting article over here on CNBC, just talking about one of the co-founders, talking about EV sales about to take off, but the question's whether production can keep up. Okay, now EV battery recycling company, Redwood Materials, that's where this J.B. Straubel, he's a Tesla co-founder. Uh, now, what's interesting here is they're talking about whether production can keep up. All right, now they're talking about can it keep up with materials that need to go into the production of these batteries, et cetera. The facility gonna produce anode, anode copper foil that will ultimately go into battery packs manufactured at the Tesla Gigafactory in November. Now, there's a sweet article I have up here. Let's see where we're going here. Come on, there we go. It's a Bloomberg opinion piece. When was this written? It was written yesterday morning. Uh, and what it talks about, and it's interesting because you look at Tesla, right? And you look at the problems that the electric vehicle makers may have in terms of just the technology to have uh, the commodities necessary to build these batteries is important. And this article made me think a lot about what's going on in society right now makes a lot of great points, just how you think about things. Vertical integration is making a comeback at US companies. Who is that gentleman? Mr. Andrew Carnegie. 19th century business innovators like Carnegie bought up suppliers and controlled all stages of production. We saw 20th century CEOs slim that down and then came COVID. Talk about displayers supply disruptions, I'll get it out. Uh, vertical integration, they call it seriously old school. I mean, that's how it happened. And they go through many cool examples here. Now, what they do talk about is that Amazon and Tesla, all right, along with a couple companies, openly push, pursue vertical integration because they're, they're trying to do things on such a large scale that they really can't wait or to sub let out everything else that is going on there. A handful of Amer American entrepreneurs pioneered the practice in the late 1800s. Ewan Carnegie began building a steel empire in the 1870s. His mills employed state-of-the-art technology that churned out growing quantities of rails. Uh, as Carnegie's empire grew, he began producing so much steel that he could no longer acquire enough lime, coal, and iron ore from the open market. Supply chain issues, is that a common theme? Does that ring a bell? Uh, cost him money because the massive plants could not sit idle. So what did he do? Uh, he acquired man a company that manufactured the fuel derived from coal used to fuel steel furnaces. Uh, he acquired mines in Masabi, Iron Range in Minnesota. Now what they talk about is that you're gonna see this happen and again in the US because of what's going on right now. Backwards and forwards integration. Backward in integration ensures that large, expensive to operate factories never went offline because they had everything they needed. When you talk about forward integration, when a company acquires businesses that handle the sale and delivery, um, they're talking about, yeah, a gentleman, Gustavus Swift, 
typified that impulse. He had slaughterhouses that were doing slaughtering back then. What did he have to do? He had to build out an entire refrigeration fleet of cars to get that delivered. Now, what they do talk about here, which is the one thing I'm going to end with, you had Henry Ford in there who did an abundance. Now, his phrase was from mine to finished car because he had to go out there. He had to buy mines. He uh, bought mines for rubber, a rubber plantation in Brazil, forests and sawmills, etc. Now, the last part, a few tech giants. This is how we'll end this one before we go into our final break of the show. A few tech giants, notably Amazon and Tesla, eschewed this approach. They were not... Uh, pushing things down the supply chain. What were they doing? They were doing vertical integration because much like their 19th century forebears, they operated at a scale and scope that made dependency on third parties untenable. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get back because Amazon, talk about changing the world. They're taking on delivery companies that they once used themselves, etc. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're going to try to Amazon up here. Amazon up just more than one tenth percent right now, trading at 3309. So pretty interesting when you try and wrap your brain around the last article I was talking about. Uh, it's an opinion piece, but I tend to agree with the premise, which is with everything we're dealing with right now that is not going to go away in the immediate future, you are going to see more companies, especially when you talk about companies like Amazon and Tesla. 
um, that are just operating on such a scale and scope that you cannot be dependent on third parties because you are at such a large scope that if that third party fails you, there is no other third party to back you up. Amazon, to their credit, figured that out with shipping. They figured out that their entire business was shipping products to homes and that they were relying on three entities, basically, whether it's UPS, FedEx and the U.S. Postal Service to get that done, they realized they had to have a greater control of that facet of their business, which is basically their entire business, okay? And what do they do? They build out their own entire distribution network of delivery vans, vehicles. Now what have they done? They've built out their own entire network of airplanes that they deliver their packages across the whole globe. Uh, in light of what's happened with COVID, having that delivery network in place has been beneficial exponentially. Tesla, you've seen them do it. They paid the price for a long time in their share price uh, when the whole world was thinking Mr. Elon Musk was doing too much at one time, risking bankruptcy. But once he turned that corner, they, un they understand that they own the production of the battery factories that are going to be so influential in electronic electric vehicles, folks. It's not just about producing electric vehicles. It's having the inputs necessary to produce them at the scale you want to, to be a company like Tesla, which is why they have the multiples they do, versus a company like Ford, GM, even Toyota, et cetera. Uh, Amazon, you look at it, man, we got quite a consolidation going on on a couple fronts. You back things up real quick, we'll end it with Amazon. Now, I am Amazon bull, folks. And we got quite a consolidation. Last time we consolidated, you could say we consolidated from about the better part of the end of 2018 to really where we took off on the COVID lows between about 1,500 and 2,000. But boy, we're now pushing the better part of a year and a half, chopping around at about 3,000 to 3,500. Amazon shares trading at 3,310. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day with me. Stay tuned. We got a replay right now, but Basil did his show live at eight in the morning, folks. That's what's coming up after that live programming all day at TFNN. Larry, Steve, Dave, Tom, we'll be right back.